For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the watercourses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture and maintain the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of the sheep and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost and I will bring back the strayed and I will bind up the, the injured and I will strengthen the weak, but the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted with all the weak animals, with your horns, until you scattered them far and wide, I will save my flock and they shall no longer be ravaged, and I will judge between the sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd, and I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken the word of the Lord. Thank you, God.
at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority, and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet, and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I guess it 
was Monday when I went to collect my mail, and in my mailbox was a handout, and what it said is, I'm Sam, and I'm doing a food collection on your street today on William for the food bank. And between four and six, we'll come by, my family and I will come by and pick up any food that you have to donate to the food bank. So I thought, and he, he learned that, he, he got the idea from a friend of his at another school where I think that young man has, they gathered something like 311 pounds. So the, the challenge was out there. Now, there was a German theologian called Karl Barth, and he said a preacher should always have a Bible in one hand and a newspaper in the other. <laughs> in other words, how do you make this relevant to this? Or does this in some way speak to what's written here? So I gave the first little anecdote. Now for the Bible. In, the, in, in two of the readings this morning, we hear about those who were able to work to bring about the reign of God. The sheep who were able to follow. When one is sheep and goats and the other is sheep. You know, how, how many of you have been down south? And you notice when you go down south, you really can't tell a sheep from the goats. Or I can't. <laughs> And we hear in Ezekiel saying that God will be there for those who have been faithful to God. Uh, Ezekiel is writing at the time of when the Babylonians had come into Israel and into Jerusalem and scooped up all those in higher places, the poor were, I think, left behind, and taken off to Babylon. And some were remain, able to remain faithful to their Jewish faith, and others were more open to being part of the faith that they were surrounded with in Babylon. And so we hear this call about one group of people who are able to remain faithful, and another who get dragged in a different direction. And then in Matthew, we hear that famous reading, some call it the Last Judgment, where there comes a time when the sheep will be upheld and the goats will be pushed to one side. Now I have to say, I personally don't believe in eternal damnation because I think God is a loving God and that always offers us repentance to look at ourselves and open to change. So I just want to add that as an aside because it's there in both those readings. When I read the, um, the Gospel from Matthew, I thought that's when the idea of Karl Barth came into my mind and I thought, well, you know, I received that uh, invitation in my mailbox to collect some of my canned goods or whatever, dry goods, and donate them to the food bank. So why don't I just take up the paper that come in, I think they come in usually Thursday on my driveway, and look and see if I can find the sheep within the newspaper. You ever do that? You know, our faith isn't just something that we express on Sundays. It's something that we live by. Karl Rahner, who is a Roman Catholic priest, uh, Franciscan, and who I follow daily in his readings and his writings, said that it is in how we live our life rather than what we believe, per se, that sorts out the sheep and the goats. 
So let me just share with you. And this is when the quiz comes in. <laughs> the first thing, you're not going to be able to see this. The first thing I found in the paper, it said, local youth creates challenge to help Orangeville Food Bank. And this is Jayla, who is the inspiration for Sam. Jayla was the one that started the idea of collecting street by street and, and threw up the challenge to see if people would pick it up because the food banks, as you know, are in desperate need. So do you think this article, which describes what they did, is about the sheep or the goats? Sheep. 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 Not always that easy. Not that easy. <laughs> then the next thing I saw, Orangeville is getting its first waste-free store. Anybody read that article? Mm -hmm. I guess you're like me, you know, very often read the local newspapers. <laughs> but this is a young woman from Brazil, and she says it's, uh, one can see how easily North Americans unconsciously generate waste and how difficult it can be to stop it. And so here she is in Orangeville with a, a waste-free store. And the idea is, if you want some shampoo, you go in, and I don't know you buy the bottle or they give the bottle, you get your shampoo, you go home, you use it. And when it's empty, you take the bottle back and you get it refilled so the bottle or the container doesn't go in the garbage. And you can do that for all kinds of, uh, I think, beauty products and sunscreen and all kinds of things. The village refillery, it's called. Now, do you think that's about the sheep or the goats? Sheep. 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 <laughs> Still, pretty easy, isn't it? <laughs> <clears throat> Next article I saw, man charged in relation to 13 downtown break and enters. And it goes on to tell the story about how, what, where they're breaking the enders were. What do you think this is about, the sheep or the goats? Sheep. I think I heard one person say sheep. <laughs> Two. This is about the story about a break and enter. So you think that's the sheep? I would have said it's the goats. But I wouldn't say that he is condemned to hell and damnation forever. Because we are called to bring about, to work with Christ, to work with God, to bring about the reign of God. And so perhaps somewhere along the line, there are people that have fallen off the edge. And we have an opportunity not to rush in and mend them, but walk with them and show them how the love of God can be forgiven. Now here's a tricky one. <laughs> it's called development. And a new bill is going through the government, uh, the Ontario government, Bill 229, that's going to be passed that will allow the Ministry of Natural Resources to make decisions on new developments and override the recommendations of conservation authorities around the province. So if the conservation authorities are saying, no, there shouldn't be housing built here, this is fragile west, uh, wetland, this Minister of Natural Resources can ride over that. And go, the conservation... Go, go. <laughs> And the more 
it's in need, the more the prices go up of housing. So it's a bit, you know, to me, there's, there's, I think often we have to wrestle with our faith. There are pros of having more housing, but there are certainly cons about destroying wetland and forests and natural habitat. So it's not always easy, I don't think, on living out our Christian faith. We have to struggle. Then this one, this is a bit about my own ego, I guess. But us of Kairos, have any of you heard of Kairos? Yeah. I know Jim's heard of Kairos, and Alonzo has heard of Kairos. And about three or four weeks ago, the editor of the Orangeville Citizen wrote an article and saying, talking about poverty and saying we need to find a middle ground. And he talked about a guaranteed annual income. And we at Kairos are very much in favor of a guaranteed annual income. Now that is a controversial one. I'm not going to ask you to put up your hands who's for or against. But just see what I mean? The goats and the sheep and the, and the struggle that's in there. It's not always easy, that journey. You know, I'm 83 and I'm still trying to sort it out and I'm sure I will so the day I die. I wish in some ways I could go back to my childhood faith. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. And then I wouldn't have to do this struggle and this wrestling. <laughs> but if we, if we want to grow in our faith, I think we're invited into that wrestle. And here's another one. This is the last one. Local <laughs> activists from Dufferin County formed the Canadian Black Association. I was in the uh, Orangeville and Shelburne had a Black Lives Matter uh, well, march, not a demonstration, a march. It also included our indigenous folk and any people of color. And so this, uh, uh, this association has been formed and one of the main functions is to help the black youth move forward. How many times have you heard on the radio a black youth say, I never have saw myself reflected in my teachers? Never. So this is a way to help them. Now, when I moved up here 25 years ago, I came from a community, a faith works community, funding department ministry. We had 90 different languages spoken there. And I, as a white person, was certainly in the minority. And then I move up here, and I'm suddenly in the majority. I said, this is a squeaky white community. This feels strange. <laughs> so would you say forming that kind of uh, association is about the sheep or the goats? But do you know people who would say, why are those people moving in here with yes. one way it was? I don't want them in my next door as my neighbors. Has anybody ever heard anything like that? Yeah. yeah, it's there. Well done. That's the end of the quiz. I have to find where I'm, where I'm at. It seems to me one of the challenges in life, as we go through life, as we go through our daily, sometimes rather mundane existence, sometimes when we have extraordinary times, asking, where is God in this? Where am I being called to be part of bringing about the reign of God? It could be as simple as phoning somebody up and saying, how are you doing? Just wanted to let you know I'm thinking about you. It doesn't, it isn't necessarily about forming a huge organization. Or it might be joining an organization like Kairos, 
where in fact we move slowly and gradually into, into the work of bringing about the reign of God. <clears throat> I had a conclusion all written out, but then when I drove up, I saw the faith work sign out there, so I think I should just put a little bit about faith works. These are not faith works ministries, but faith works is where our church comes together, gathers up all the ends and pieces of worship, and goes forth to be the church in the world, whether it's in a ministry in a multicultural place, and I'm present there, and not saying it only works with people who are Christians, that it's expansive and includes everybody. Whether it's a shelter for women, whether it's an, a, a lunch hour program, whether it's supporting people coming out of jail, it's tremendous, and I often think you know, that's why we're fed on Sunday. We're not fed, I don't believe, we're just fed for ourselves. We're fed to get that energy and to go out into the community and be a present, to be a witness. Not necessarily standing on the street corner and waving a Bible, but just in how we relate to one another and how we challenge some of the issues. As I said, Richard Rome speaks so strongly of right practice rather than right belief. I don't think I'm saying out of turn if I say some struggle with the notion that we've been brought up that Mary was a virgin when she birthed Jesus. Some of us struggle with that. So yes, there are things, and that's okay to struggle and wrestle with our faith. But it's how we live it out. I invite you, the next time you pick up a paper, to read it. Pick out articles where you see that the reign of God is being worked on. It'll be a secular story. But that's often where we find it, isn't it? So at the conclusion today when we leave, can we go forth and in fact be the church in the world? Amen. Amen. Oh, one little thing I have to, one more little piece. This little piece of paper was in my mailbox yesterday, and it says, the top is Orangeville Food Bank. 225 pounds of food was collected from William Street, my street, and donated to the Orangeville Food Bank. Thank you so much for your contribution. It was so great to see this street come together. Sincerely, Sam. That's what I call incarnation of the spirit, the spirit in the flesh. Amen. Amen. The prayers of the people this morning are based on Faith Work Sunday and the reign of Christ. Our bidding today will be, Holy God, in your compassion. And the response is, hear our prayer. Holy God, in your compassion. Hear our prayer. Let us pray for Christ's one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. In the world of and communion, we remember the people and clergy of the Church of Bermuda, Bishop Nicholas Dill. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the Primates World Relief and Development Fund. And in our parish cycle of prayer, for Betty and Harry French, Catherine and Bill Graham, Laura and James, 
Larissa, Ted, Quinn, and Holly and Gray. For our frontline workers in our healthcare system, ambulance and paramedic attendants. For our brothers and sisters of Troy New United Church in Long Mills and St. Mark's Anglican Church in Orangeville. And for Randall Shea in the school in Guatemala. We pray today and always for the clergy and leaders of your church at every level as they guide us back to safe worship and into an expanded understanding and experience of your church. We pray for this church whose holy purpose is to make us more able to know Jesus, whom we call the Christ, through our worship, through our community, but especially through knowing Jesus in those who have been isolated from the human family due to poverty, injustice, discrimination, illness, and sheer vulnerability. We pray for the Faith Works family of support, that those who work within it find their lives deeply enriched and their energy sustained by the gratitude of all who learn of their work. We pray for the success of the Faith Works fundraising campaign. Through this campaign, we are given a chance to be those hands that do the work of saving lives and offering hope for many. Help us to be as generous as possible, especially in this time when we are made aware of what it is to be alone, in need, and fearful of the future. May the eyes of our hearts be always open to the full humanity of all. Holy God, in your compassion. Hear our prayer. Loving God in every age, you call your people to love one another by seeking justice and mercy for all. Help us to act in our daily lives to erase the divisions among people that stifle life. Holy God, in your compassion. Hear our prayer. Let us pray for this creation, which we have been given. Almighty God, pour down your healing on all creatures stressed by climate change and pollution. Help us to live in balance and beauty with our home and all its life. Holy God, in your compassion, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who are suffering from war, Poverty, ignorance, violent crime, cruelty, or injustice of any kind. We pray for prisoners Michael Calgary and Michael's, Michael Spavor. For those who are sick or suffering in body, mind, or spirit, especially Bishop Michael Balso, Bill. Michelle, Norma Hamill, Molly Wong, Kim Gilmore, Christopher Franklin, Debbie White, John Fancett, Ron Coles, Charles Flower, Danielle Zwanke. Margaret Deeds. And for all in our hearts, for those whom we have forgotten. Resourceful God, your goodness reaches to every dire circumstance. Infuse these lives with comfort and strength. Holy God, in your compassion. Hear our yeah. prayer. Let us pray for those whom we have lost in these last days as they continue their journey to God. Especially we remember those in seniors' residences and retirement homes who have passed through COVID. Holy One, we lift them to your loving hands. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord, 
and let like a vegetable shine upon them. Let us celebrate the reign of Christ today in remembrance that divinity arose among us in Jesus, lives within us, and sees us daily in the lives of those who call out for assistance. May that divinity be a source of strength, hope, kindness, and joy in all of us, and may our prayers today be woven into the great, living, changing fabric of God's kingdom. Almighty God, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, who is alive with you and the Holy Spirit, today and forever.
his victory through us, we pray, that all the world may see his light. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. Conclude the prayer of the Bible, page 214. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do anything more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, and in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. Be steadfast in faith, joyful in hope and untiring in love all the days of your life. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and those you love, here and in paradise, now and forever. Amen. Can you see it, please? So here we are again. Back to making an announcement that I don't want to have to make. If you have the faith of a mustard seed, like we talked about last week, and you can lift anything up, and you can take our church, lift it up, and put it across the street, we'd be in Dufferin, Wellington, and we'd be able to stay open. But because we are on this side of Highway 9, we are in the heel. And that means that we have to close for the next 28 days, Saturday. We are permitted to 10 people at worship, but once you deduct Zach, Greg, and me, that gives us seven. And we really couldn't figure out how we would take which lucky seven got to come to church on any given Sunday. So we are going back to our virtual church just for 28 days. Don't say hopefully 10. No, that's we It's 28 days. I refuse to entertain any other concept. So the church will be open on Wednesdays, for sure, because we'll be um, recording the service. Uh, if you could volunteer to be a reader or an intercessor for the next few weeks and are able to come here to the church on a Wednesday to do your reading or to do your intercession, that would be terrific. And if you could speak to Jim, maybe after Mass, he could just kind of take a quick note of things and, and let you know. You haven't been a reader before, but would like to be a reader now. As long as you can read. Oh, I'm um, just <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> saying. I think we should do this right <laughs> So there's two right there. Those two Jim sign up. So if you would like to do a reading, you don't have to do a reading before, some of my just ball and told you, and then you're in. Please speak to Jim. It's not just confined, obviously, to these few weeks, but you know, on a going forward basis, when we're back together worshiping, definitely for Christmas. Um, let you know and make sure he has your contact information. Also, because we'll be um, linking our services once again onto our website and onto YouTube, Jim sends out a email every week indicating that the um, service is up and ready to be accessed. If we don't have your email address, then we can't send you that link. So if we don't have your address or you're not sure or if you've changed it or whatever, also please speak to Jim after Mass so we can make sure that we have your most recent contact information so that we can get in touch with you. Uh, you can see also the other announcements on the um, Back in the bulletin today, I'm um, also going to be really into some other events we're celebrating. We'll be celebrating as we alluded to, and as our thought says, we're celebrating Faith Work Sunday. And that is the major outreach of our diocese. So if uh, you're interested in making a donation or you want to know more, you can go online. Uh, you can ask Penny for a bit more information. Um, you can find the information in the Anglican. If you haven't picked up your copy, please do. Uh, or also your copy of Forward Day by Day, which is on the um, table at the back as well. Are there any other announcements not containing bulletin? Which... Yes, Kurt, from the back. I'd just like to say how nice it was a month ago when you pointed out Zach's birthday 
and ask if anybody else had one. So I'd like to say that it's my granddaughter's fifth birthday today. Oh. I wondered if anybody else might be celebrating. Oh, I see. Are you celebrating your birthday? You put your hand up. Oh, excuse me. I don't see your hand up, Elizabeth. Okay, it's my birthday. Thank you. 